Hey there guys, I am Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. So in the latest White Dwarf we got another Index Astartes update, much like we saw previously with the Tome Keepers, and this time there are some brand new rules, relics and stratagems for the Exorcists chapter. Now I'm going to focus mainly on the rules we get in the White Dwarf here, but I will say if you are interested there is a good 7 or 8 pages of background, fluff and lore about the chapter, and if you don't know, they are a fairly cool chapter in the 40k universe with strong ties to the Ordo Malleus and basically designed to be resistant to corruption and demonic influence. So if you do want to know more about them, then this issue of White Dwarf 462 may well be worth picking up, and if you do want a chapter which has a background of going up against demons and chaos corruption, then this may well be the chapter that you are looking for. But anyway, on to what we actually get in the Codex Supplement itself. The Exorcists get two pages of rules in the White Dwarf, and these cover their very own chapter tactics, some relics, stratagems, and warlord traits. It's worth noting that they are an Imperial Fist's successor, so it tells you to use these rules in addition to those from the Imperial Fist Supplement. So things like their stratagems and the ability for successes to pay to get access to some of the other war gear and relic options. They of course don't get the Imperial Fist chapter tactic in addition to their own, although they do get access to the Legacy of Dawn Super Doctrine, so don't forget about that. Instead, the Exorcists get their own tactic, which is called By My Will I Deny Thee. And what this chapter tactic is, essentially, is two of the custom ones that we've seen in the main Marine Codex, specifically they have the Stalwart and the Warded successor traits. What these give you are, for Stalwart, each time an attack is made against a unit with this tactic, an unmodified wound roll of 1 or 2 always fails, irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the attacker may have. And Warded, which means that each time a model with this tactic loses a wound as a result of, the, of a mortal wound, you roll a d6, and on a 5+, plus that wound is not lost. They're both very survival oriented traits, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, and when you're up against things like chaos and demons, who may well be bringing a lot of mortal wounds in the form of psychic powers or various weapons and abilities, this does give you a good bit more survivability against things that are typically very good at chewing through units with good armour and invulnerable saves like marines have. Likewise, Stalwart essentially just means that 2s are never going to wound you, which admittedly is only going to be good against higher strength weapons, but still it does mean that if your enemy is shooting las cannons or melter or missile launchers at your units, and especially at things like terminators, it is going to give them you know, an extra 16% chance to avoid taking that damage, which isn't terrible really as far as uh, chapter tactics go. I would say that overall they're not the most exciting chapter tactics to have, and whilst they're definitely not in the bottom tier of the successor tactics that you can choose, they're certainly not the ones that you would expect to see if you were trying to build the strongest successor chapter possible. So I mean, they're nice to have and they certainly will help boost your army's survivability, but they're not going to be making everyone rush out to build an exorcist force to, you know, try and break the meta. Up next they show off some unique relics for the exorcists, and like the warlord traits and stratagems, we have three to choose from. The first up is a replacement bolt pistol called Cessation. This gives you a one shot strength 5, minus 3 AP, 3 damage pistol with an 18 inch range, and it gives you ability gives you the ability to re-roll the hit and wound roll for it. On paper, those are some nice stats, and the ability with full rerolls is a really great one to have, especially in ninth, where that isn't as common as it was, say, in eighth. The only thing that makes this really kind of meh for me is that it's just a one-shot pistol. And yes, whilst it is a really good pistol, I just don't see many people gravitating towards taking a relic pistol when they're choosing their, their first relic or piece of war gear to take. There's almost always something which is either more useful as a force multiplier or something which buffs your melee output, and as I've always said, for marine HQs, 99% of the time melee is where your strength is, you know, more so than your shooting and, and where you can really shine with your HQs, so buffing that output is usually much more worthwhile than improving your ranged output. Still, it is a sneaky surprise if people aren't expecting it, and being able to one-shot things like Inceptors or Aggressors 
could be quite funny if you wanted to spend a CP to get an extra relic. I just wouldn't make it your main free one. The Exile Plate is the second one that we're shown, and this is a suit of armor which not only gives you a 2-up save, but also means that when enemies are within engagement range, invuln saves of 1 to 4 always fail. And for fluffier purposes, for Chaos Demon models, 1 to 5s always fail. This is potentially really, really good when you think about how many HQ units and even strong melee units have invulnerable saves. Things like Storm Shield Terminators now have to fall back to their base 5 up invun, and HQs are losing the benefit of their Iron Halo having to rely on a 5 up rather than the 4 up that the Halo brings. And against demons themselves, their invuns are pretty much 5 up across the board, so meaning that they can only pass on a 6 up is really, really huge. And like I said, very fluffy for the exorcists as well because they are made to combat demons. So I like this relic a lot. I genuinely think it has a lot of potential and will definitely make your opponent wary of the character that you have it on, knowing that their HQ or their melee beat stick unit is going to be a heck of a lot more vulnerable if they let this character get into melee range with them. For me, the two up save is kind of just the gravy on top of the ability that this relic gives you. Um, overall, I think it's a very solid relic and definitely one I would definitely consider. The final relic you have access to is the very funkily named Expulsiaris. I believe it's pronounced Expulsiaris. This is a replacement for a power sword or a master crafted power sword and grants you a buffed up sword coming in at strength plus two, minus four AP and a flat two damage, which in itself is not a bad profile for a weapon for a melee character, but then it also causes uh, a mortal wound on unmodified wound rolls of six. Again, fitting the exorcist's fluff, this mortal wound uh, proc goes off on four plus against chaos demon units. So it's actually a really nice way to get through those invulnerable saves, meaning that you should realistically be getting through at least one or two mortal wounds when your character swings at demon units with this weapon. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the relics if I'm being honest. Both Expulsiaris and the Exile Plate have definite spots in a list. And cessation is good and it is reasonably strong. I just don't see it getting chosen as much when you have so many other relic options to choose from. But all in all, not a bad few additions and not a bad few options uh, for you players if you want to play exorcists and bring things that are unique to them. You also get three unique warlock traits to play around with and all three of them are reasonable. There's no auto take ones here, I don't think, like some other chapters have but I don't think any of them are especially useless. And again, if you wanted to go for a pure exorcists list and just use everything which is unique to them, there are some valid options out of these three for you to choose. Enochian Guard is the first trait, which gives you a once per game ability to modify either a hit, a wound, or a saving throw to a six. This is obviously quite restrictive as it's a one use thing, but in the right situation, it could be absolutely key. Being able to make that saving throw a guaranteed 6 if you get caught out of position or in a combat and you don't quite manage to kill your enemy before they can swing back. Likewise, if you really need to kill an opponent, giving you that guaranteed roll of 6 to wound may be all the difference between living and dying. It also ties up quite nicely with the Relic Sword Expulsiaris because that obviously does mortal wounds on a wound roll of 6, so you can guarantee that 6 and get that extra mortal wound through if you really need it. The trait also has a second part which allows you a once per battle use of an epic deed stratagem for no command points, and obviously saving yourself to 2 CP for doing a final only in death does duty end could be really handy or being able to do it even if you don't have any command points left could mean that you can lull your enemy into a full sense of security and then give them a very nasty surprise by using this stratagem when they thought that you you know you couldn't because you had no command points left it's overall a pretty good trait i think the fact that both parts are limited to one use things is a bit of a pain and slightly lowers it in my book a bit but both of the abilities are potentially quite powerful if you use them in the right situation. Know Thy Enemy is the next warlord trait. This gives you a six inch aura called, funnily enough, <laughs> Know Thy Enemy, and means that you get to choose an enemy unit. And during the battle, Exorcist's core and character units get plus one to their hit rolls if they are within that aura. It's very strong against certain big, scary characters or units that 
you absolutely need to take out so again if you're up against enemy greater demons or you have people like magnus or mortarian coming your way it can definitely help you take them down that much easier and the fact that it's an aura means that multiple units can benefit from that plus one so it is a very good little force multiplier as well i definitely think that this one is the best of the three traits you can take uh one that i would definitely consider if i knew that my opponent was bringing an army that quite often had those sort of big centerpiece models in it but even if it doesn't as i said it is a good force multiplying warlord trait so i think generally they tend to be the ones that are more beneficial overall than ones that specifically buff your warlord finally we have the erudite in the verses which is a fairly standard your warlord can deny the witch trait or if they could already do that they can deny the witch an additional time it's not bad and again fits with the fluff of the exorcists it also comes with another additional component that means that if your warlord isn't in engagement range they can roll a d6 in the shooting phase and on a three plus the closest enemy unit within 12 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds so it's kind of a nice little tiny smite as well it's not bad against armies like eldar or tyranids or you know demons uh, that have a lot of psychic powers in their list uh, you know having that extra deny or having a deny to begin with uh, could be handy in some games and having those extra mortal wounds it's nothing super exciting but as i've said many times shooting isn't really the strength of your hqs as a marine player so swapping out their bolt pistol because you do this d6 roll instead of shooting but instead of shooting your bolt pistol you can potentially do three mortal wounds to an enemy so i think it's definitely worth considering if you think you may be coming up against some enemy psychers and you want to slightly boost the the ranged damage potential of your warlord as i said they're not bad overall i do think that know thy enemy is the standout one and probably the one as i said i would take the most but the other two definitely have their uses and in certain situations could be really beneficial to your army finally we have the stratagems and again like i said there are three of these that you can use throughout the battle they have a battle tactic a requisition and a strategic ploy stratagem cast out thy black and soul and i'm just going to say they do like to say thy a lot don't they is the first one and for two command points it's either really really good or absolutely pointless essentially when a unit from your army is selected to shoot or fight you can choose a chaos demon unit within 12 inches and in that phase you can re-roll wound rolls so against demons this could be really really good getting your re-rolls to wound makes even things like bolters really good at chewing through those big 30-man blobs of lesser demons and it will make things like las cannons be able to avoid the dreaded ones when they're shooting against greater demons so it is good and if you go up against demons don't forget it because it is a very very powerful stratagem in that case against any other army in the game just forget that this thing exists because you will never ever use it but again it is nice and fluffy for the exorcists so in my mind i can let it off being so niche because it matches what the exorcists are meant to do and what they're good at so i can understand them having a stratagem which is solely focused in that particular you know focus in that particular niche orison cult is the second stratagem you have access to and this is used before the battle and if you pretty much aren't a souped army then you can select a core or character unit and one combat doctrine and once per battle you can choose for that doctrine to be active for that unit instead of the doctrine that is meant to be active so if you had a unit that you really wanted to be in assault doctrine turn two you could select that unit and select the assault doctrine and then in turn to use this stratagem to essentially bring the assault doctrine forward for that unit likewise if you have a heavy weapons squad you could choose the devastator doctrine and then you could choose to let them stay in that doctrine for an extra turn just to help buff their shooting as much as possible and of course with the fists which you are a successor chapter of getting bonuses in the devastator doctrine with their super doctrine ability this could be pretty handy giving your las cannons or plasma cannons that extra point of damage for an extra turn so overall this one i think is quite useful and allows you to play a bit more tactically with your units knowing that you can essentially reserve an extra turn of buffed up shooting or buffed up melee for a particular unit finally we have spiritual resolve which i think is really cool it's pricey at two command points but when a unit from your army is selected as the target for an enemy psychic power you can use this 
and it just isn't resolved. No deny roll, no roll off or anything like that. It's just flat out cancelled. So it's really nice at keeping your units alive uh, if you are up against anything which is psycho heavy um, and you don't have a lot of librarians or other psychos that can do deny the witch rolls. It's just a nice little backup and it's quite a useful stratagem to have in your back pocket if you do ever need it. So there we go, that is the stratagems. As I said, they aren't bad. Spiritual Resolve and Horizon Cult both have a lot of very good benefits, and even Cast Out Thy Blackened Soul is a good stratagem. It's just incredibly, incredibly niche. I think in general, these are some pretty fun, reasonably solid rules that if you have or you run an Exorcist's army, you should definitely consider using when you play them. They have a pretty solid mixture of fluff and usefulness on the tabletop and yes whilst they're not going to make you the most powerful army or even the most powerful marine chapter there are some potentially nasty tricks and tools which you can unleash on your opponents and i also think that for narrative games these rules are fantastic if you want to do a campaign that brings the exorcists into conflict with some demons then i think these rules would be really fun to play around with you know for the marine player the demon player may not be quite so happy, but I like to think that they would enjoy the challenge of trying to overcome a Space Marine chapter which has been specifically crafted to face the horrors of chaos and come out of the other side unharmed, because in my mind, what better challenge for the chaos gods than to utterly destroy the Imperium's best efforts to stop them, you know? But there we go, what do you think of the Exorcist's Index Astartes rules? Do you think they do a good job of portraying how the Exorcists should be in the fluff and on the tabletop, and I'd also be interested to know if you think that GW should do these kind of Index Astartes bespoke rules for other armies, things like Orcs or Tyranids or any others that haven't had their 9th edition codexes yet. Would you rather see some new bespoke placeholder rules for those armies instead of seeing just another Space Marine chapter? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.